across the street after we stop so we don't get hit. Hopefully, we're gonna jog like a normal person just with a small snippet of this wave and continue back into the shaded area of Cutler Bay. So let's see. Hey. So right now where I'm at, I'm a college student. I'm trying to get my master's. So what am I doing is I'm trying to enjoy it as much as possible, live it up in the sense you know, of having an understanding of where I am, what I'm doing, what I'm responsible to do every waking day of my existence in that university. And not, of course, you know, you could look forward and see, and it's good to do, is to see which job prospects and things you might see yourself doing afterwards. So, look ahead, but don't let it trap you. Don't let it encompass you. Because it'll distract you from where you are. And that's one important thing. One thing that I read in The Power of Now is the idea of presence, being where you are right now, living, breathing, whatever you're doing now, live in the moment. The big, big concept that Eckhart Tolle teaches in his book. And one easy way to get into that step is to meditate. Because it forces you not to suppress your thoughts. Some may think meditation is being something that's trying to quiet your mind. Not necessarily. Of course, sitting down and doing essentially nothing, things will float into your mind and you don't stop them. You let them swim around in your mind. You let it pass by you like a train or waves hitting the beach. And you acknowledge them. You notice, you recognize that they're there. But you don't let it distract you from the present moment. Because sometimes the past or the future might seem nice and glorious. You see that Lamborghini you've always wanted to drive. And you picture yourself driving it once you get that job or that raise or that rap career <laughs> for some of you. But that's only, how do you say, shallow. Because what you might forget to enjoy is the process, the process of working towards that Lamborghini or whatever car it is or house, whatever you might dream of attaining. That process is what is found in the present moment and what essentially you should be striving towards. And also for some people, they might want to think or they might be inclined to reflect on past situations, high school, whatever it is, or they might used to have a Lamborghini and God forbid it got taken away. It could have been a drug dealer or someone doing illicit things, illegal things of hedonistic pleasure and not worrying about the implications of their behaviors catches up to them and soon they find themselves, whether they're in a jail cell or whatever with everything gone or divorce, whatever you may, unfortunate situation you might consider to happen. So with that, you have to walk this tight balance between the present moment making the most of your present because you have trust that it will make your future right that you'll use your past experiences to make you a better person in the now and that's all you'll ever have is the now so why get lost in the past or the future when all you have is the current moment Right now where I'm at, walking or running on the sidewalk, crossing the street, 
why would I go back to the moment of how I got to this street, you know? Why would I want to go back to that moment when the more important thing is to be where I'm at right now, on my way towards finishing, on my way towards completing my fitness goal, my goal of burning body fat and seeing those abs come out and chiseling out my face. Why would I want to look back and get lost in that when I'm supposed to be preoccupied with the present moment? One example I use is if you're sitting in a car, driving, you're on the road, you're moving about, why would you be thinking of, say, God forbid you got into an accident before, or someone honked at you, you got angry, why would you let that take up space in your mind and make you forget what you're doing right now is driving? And you might even, guess what? You might even crash because you don't know what's going on. You lost focus of the present moment, which is what you're doing. You gotta drive, you gotta move around. You gotta go around objects, navigate yourself. So you can't be lost in that. So what were we talking about? Let's see. Or we can talk about something brand new. Let's see. Oh, we got the ivy over on this house. No, we've always wanted a house like that with ivy on it. Haha. -ha. And here we are. And we're in a beautiful neighborhood with nice houses. And that's one thing. When I run, I like to, let's see, expose myself to both a quote unquote rich neighborhood and a quote unquote poor neighborhood. Oftentimes, people might be drawn to run, walk, drive, whatever they want to do in nice places, nice cars, with nice people. But one thing that might get sacrificed in that process is the idea of perspective. You want to have perspective. You want to be able to see what it's like to be rich, what it's like to be poor, what it's like to see both ends of the spectrum. So when you encounter other beings in those positions, whether rich or poor, you have a greater understanding of what it's like to be them, what it's like to do the things that they do or the habits that they might have. Because it makes you wiser. You have more experience. You're better able to deal with those people. I'm slowly starting to pick up that little tad bit. So that little part of running, like how I would apply it is before I would just run in the nice golf courses around Miami, the nice places. But over time, I got bored of that. As nice as it was, seeing all those mansions, all those nice cars, all those people walking around with nice watches and nice wives. <laughs> and that, believe it or not, got old. And then what I started to do was I started to run in areas that weren't, you know, as good performing as the, the, the rich neighborhoods were. And what that did was it gave me a fresh perspective, you know, on what it's like to be on the other side, to be, to have these different circumstances and to grow up with these different situations, living environments, just running around, just walking by and seeing these people, observing their body language, how they walk, listening to them talk as you pass them by, probably saying hello because you want to be a nice person, regardless of which neighborhood you might be. But that, and I still continue to do that to this day, I still go by poor neighborhoods, check them out, make sure I'm safe, everything is fine. We don't want to take an unnecessary risk here.